Warning, the following audio transmission is based on theory and is intended for entertainment purposes only. It's Doomsday and its affiliates will not be held liable for anything your dumbass does. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome everybody to It's Doomsday Podcast Live. Today is February 6, 2023. Time is 6.01 p.m. And joining me as always is J-Dog. What's up, J-Dog? Oh, Jester, Jester, Jester. Or is it Lester? It, uh, Which Jester? one is it? it? You know what? It could be whatever you want it to be. Listen, either way, I have a plan. It's 2023. Let's hear this plan. I'm thinking of (laughs) what? I haven't even said anything yet, and you're already laughing at my idea. Are you thinking of balloons? Oh, my God. Can you tell me? What am I thinking of right now? Um, Ice cream. No, 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 no. Ah, close. So, I am thinking of balloons. And here's why. Because I'm thinking of this idea. I'm going to buy a whole bunch of them, right? And I'm going to fill them with helium. Okay. And I'm going to strap them to my house. All right. And then I'm going to go float around in in the sky. And see how long it takes people to figure out that I'm up there. You know... <laughs> It depends on it depends on where you're coming from, um, because apparently, if you're coming into the West Coast from the direction of Russia or China, you will be highly ignored till you end up over a couple missile silos or two. I'm thinking of drifting my way on to Canada because they just allow anything to happen. <laughs> I don't know. We've been pretty uh, we've been pretty laid back lately here in the U.S., allowing a lot of things to go on. Man, I'm going to write really big on the side of my house. Lick it, Trudeau. <laughs> anyway, uh, welcome everybody to the show. Let's just go ahead and give a welcome here to everybody that's in the in the room here. We've got uh, T said Sydney. What's up? How are you, uh, Jake Ozark with Have Food Will Travel Podcast? We got Jelly. We got Tiff Shelby. Uh, Rifles here. Just a minute too. WV Pappy. What's it going on? Angela, Eric, uh, the Big Daddy Al podcast, a.k.a. Al. We got Bob, Peta, Kate, and Gammy. What's up, everybody? Hope everybody had a great Monday, guys. And I'm doing good, City. Thank you for asking. Jake, how was your Monday? Um, I just got home 20 minutes ago, if that tells you anything. I'll let you be the guest. I'm going to say today was a bad day. It was not a good day. I try to keep in that realm of positivity where it could have been worse. I could have uh, set a big building on fire in Illinois. I could have fallen inside a crack of a giant earthquake. Um, I don't know. There's a whole litany of things that could happen. Right. You could have been involved in a major train derailment and could now be sucking down chemical fumes somewhere around, you know, Beaver County, Pennsylvania or Palestine, Ohio. I'm doubtful. I'm pretty sure if I would be the only survivor of the train crash and Mr. Glass would come looking for me. Oh, that was a great movie. Oh, that's a good movie. It's my favorite movie. You know they did like three, right? Oh, yeah, I do. For yeah. For sure. And 15 years later, in a little diner, they're looking at this guy and they said, oh, what was the name of that guy? And then old Brucey Willis, Mr. Glass, and I just got chills really good movie we'll see he was there was that one movie that came out that followed that with with the uh the guy that played professor xavier in the x-men movies i could never remember his name um not the old guy the young version of him 
Well, there was Unbreakable. Not Patrick that was the Stewart. first one in like 1999 right. it was, or 2000 or something like that. It was Unbreakable. And then uh, whatever that one is where he plays the Beast and he has like 23 different personalities. And then there was Glass after that one. So I want to say it was like me, myself, and Irene, but I know that wasn't the right title. No, I think that's right, actually. <laughs> me, myself, and Ivan. No, but that was uh, that was a wild movie, the one where he played the Beast guy. It was uh, very was creepy. Me, myself, and Patricia, right? Mm. You got me wanting to look this up now. I'm going to have to look this up. So uh, in the media lately, there's been all these talk about balloons. What's going on with that? I don't know. I thought that was a song of the 80s. What are we talking about? <laughs> Some chick sang it with hairy armpits. It was wild. It was? Yeah. All right. So if you guys, I don't think, well, I mean, most of the listeners of the show aren't living under a rock. So I'm sure everybody knows about the dang Chinese balloon that, that started cruising its way over here. And I guess there's two balloons and we haven't heard about the second one. Oh, I guess. Yeah. I'm to- wondering. Totally not a spy balloon. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm trying to keep it together here. It's not working today, though. It's it's one of those days. I'm I'm getting sick, and you ever get sick, and it starts with the back of your throat, the back of the nasal cavity, and everything starts getting numb, like scratchy back there and numb, and things just don't taste right. I don't have that problem because I have a wife, and I don't have other things going on. <laughs> Are you suggesting that I'm doing the the uh, booger sugar? Totally not a spy balloon, Rester. <laughs> okay. No. So anyway, I got I got that shitty scratching feeling going on, and I that to me that tells me a cold's coming. It's uh, James McAvoy, Avoy, A V Avoy, McAvoy, um, and McAvoy, and it was Split. That was the name of the movie. Yeah. That yeah. One. <laughs> split <laughs> he was also in the x-men thing you're right and then he was in that movie wanted where they could bend bullets with angelina jolie you know i'm sitting here looking this up and i'm trying to find it and then i look up in the chats everybody found it already thank you ozarks for the effort you put forward <laughs> <laughs> i'm over here like searching trying to find this it's already in the chat you know fuck me right um anyway uh, so if you guys yeah. if you guys don't know uh mr jakers here is starting something new over on the Twitter. I am. Or the Twatter. Um, I think it's called something like Tongue Tied Tuesdays or Talk to know. Me Tuesdays or Twitter Talk Tuesdays. I don't know. I don't Twatter. have a name for it. Twitter Spaces on Tuesdays. Twitter Spaces on Tuesdays. I'm just going to come up with something new that involves three letters every every week. Twitter uh, Tuesday. To we'll do Twitter that. Tuesday. Twatter Tuesday. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Name it as you go. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> oh God, I am just I'm in, in such a weird mode today. Anyway, I hope everybody had a good Monday, guys. We're gonna get into this balloon stuff a little bit. I uh have a lot of what's up, little Joe? I have a lot of weird questions surrounding this balloon situation. And more questions as to why we didn't do anything and where the wreckage is now. It's in the ocean. Well, last I heard, it was being uh, pulled up by Navy divers. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, they they shot it straight out the sky and and it fell in the water. And they still haven't retrieved it yet. And it's only been two days. Now, if you go to the... uh, CNN's website here, they said everything you need to know about the suspected Chinese spy balloon. Mm. Um, and it, but anyway, so one day ago, these guys are reporting that they're working on getting the debris recovered from the Chinese spy balloon. Um, China's trying to say this was a civilian balloon. And I'm, I'm like thinking in my head, I mean, I know we got Elon Musk that's a civilian here and he's putting a lot of money into, into his own. SpaceX is it SpaceX Elon Musk has? Yeah. Yep. Or is, well, Bezos has one too. What's his? I don't know because nobody talks about that one. No, they don't, do they? No, they don't. I don't think oh, anybody cares shit. about it. Hold on. I gotta look this up. 
He's basically Lex Luthor, you know? Bezos' space company's Blue Origin. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. And, and nobody talks about that one. Yeah, nobody cares about it. It's like the I... great value version of rockets. <laughs> Hey Preppers, do you want 10% off survival food? Go to www.readywise.com and use code DOOM10 at checkout for 10% off all your survival food needs. Again, that's code DOOM10 at checkout at readywise.com, D-O-O-M-10 for 10% off at readywise.com. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. So anyway, to, to push forward with this, they're saying that this is a civilian balloon. I'm not buying it very, I, I don't know what's going on in China. I don't have any friends over in China. I don't know what they do on a daily basis. Could they have a civilian balloon? Absolutely. I guess they could. Right. Everybody well, does. Sure. Why not? Why would they get so angry and upset and mad if we shot down a civilian balloon? Because it's theirs. <laughs> now and you got to think like you know china's a very strict country um especially to their citizens you don't think they would have went after these civilians like hey your shit's leaving the airspace like are leaving our 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 airspace you got to go get that something no they're fine man china's peaceful everybody there loves their country right i'm sure they do they do trust me Everybody's super happy in a place where you can only, you don't have to put a lot of thought into things because they already have everything planned out for you. They're always keeping an eye on their people and making sure that nobody gets hurt or gets hit by cars or like purse snatched with all those cameras, which is really cool. And you have like a certain limit of haircuts. You can get like, you can choose from like a dozen different types that you can have. And um, you, you don't have to put a lot of thought into anything. The choices are already made for you. It's a great life. Right, so technically you don't have to do anything. Yeah, you just do what you're told, and then you say, yes, sir, and then you go do it. Right. So <laughs> somebody was clearly told then to send a balloon over the U.S. Yeah, probably. There's like yeah. three so far that we know about, but there's probably more like 30. Well, see, for me, uh, you know, I'm kind of looking at the situation as they wouldn't <sighs> – it's really funny to, to suggest what they would actually be releasing to the American people, what they know about, right? And I think with this situation, they pretty much had to release it because I think people were spotting this. Yeah, it started on social media, and uh, one guy caught it. And originally, I think he thought it was uh, like a second moon because, you know, the, the conspiracy stuff. But later on, um, you know, uh, roughly about six hours after that, other people started seeing it and got a closer look with better quality phones. And we figured out what exactly it was. And it was basically a satellite attached to a balloon. Right. So, so I and had I'm, to talk about it at that point. So one article I, I read stated something about this thing had multiple cameras on it. That was like continuously, I guess, either, either live streaming or, or tracking or doing like the photo tracking where it's like just kind of cruising around, snapping pictures and putting together things as it's going, right? So it has it has a series of cameras positioned in a circle, um, a 360 degree circle, and they want to keep it at roughly 25,000 foot altitude. And it's not snapping live video, it's snapping photos at an extremely high rate, um, anywhere from like 24 to 60 uh, frame per second. Um, the, the, the quality of the photos is like a million pixels a piece. So they can zoom in on like something that's about six inches in diameter, um, from 25,000 feet away. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I know, okay, just, I, I, I've heard for years we have crazy satellite technology and I've, I've heard people tell me stories about how you could set a coin on the ground and they could read what the, what year that coin was made from space with these satellites. That's how powerful they are. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. 
this is back in the 90s. This came from some kooky people. I don't know if it was like true or not, but this is at the time when Microsoft Terror Server was big. Remember, remember terraserver.microsoft.com? I do. Yeah, that was like, and you were like, oh my God, it, nothing, you know, none of it was in real time. Some of it was glitchy. Some stuff I think was like not, I don't want to say in black and white, but very low uh, color quality to the imagery, right? right? And I remember some of these old timers saying, if you think that's awesome, you should see what they're really using now. And I'm like, oh, there's more. And apparently there is. And uh, I don't know if it's still there, but there was also a couple of years back, a big camera put on the tallest building in Dubai. And apparently it was shooting photos at like a million some pixels per photo. And I remember messing around with that. And from that super tall building at the very top, you could zoom in and you can read license plates clear as day. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's freaky. I don't know if it's still around. I'll have to find the link and drop it. Yeah, that'd be pretty wild to see. Um, anyway, but yeah, so to continue into this, like, you know, this was my whole thing with this, with this balloon was that if those kind of satellites actually exist up in space, we know China has a space program. We know that they have satellites up there. What would, you know, what would be the need to even do this spy balloon thing? They don't even need to. We've got 200 million devices connected to a Trojan horse known as TikTok that everybody has in this country. So they got all the data. What more do they need? Right. And that's what, you know, that's what made me think that this was something more, right? Like this is either a hoax or it's a cover up, or this is somebody's rogue weather balloon. And they're just like, Hey, let's make up this crazy story. You know, part of me wants to lean toward this as a hoax. And then the other part of me wants to believe there's something more here. Like they're going to use this as a way to potentially start a war or create a bigger conflict right yeah yeah you can theorize things um i think that they found out for sure that it's a chinese balloon i'm not sure i know some people said there was like writing on the balloon or the device itself that was that was written in chinese which still in my mind says mm, doesn't really mean a whole lot to me you know you have to really break into the tech and get into the data and figure out where exactly it's engineered and programmed from and you can find out but um you know, a lot of thoughts cross my mind is like, well, we know that our, our main issues are Russia and China, Russia and China, and we're giving Ukraine $1.1 billion on average per month, um, every month, and we have been. Um, so things cross my mind, like, well, are we trying to just use this kind of kind of like what we did back in the day when immediately we had a couple planes fly into a building and we immediately knew it was from the Middle East, you know? Um, how did we know that immediately as soon as they hit? Because it was we, planned. Oh, what? Huh? <laughs> did I say that out loud? <laughs> you know, it, 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 it kind of echoes that same, that same mentality. I don't think anybody's crazy for questioning anything at all. I think, I think it's perfectly healthy to have questions about things and ask legitimate questions. And we should be asking all this kind of stuff could that could that just be a, a reason to legitimize you know because we're already going after tiktok we're trying to ban it and and now this you know let's let's add in a litany of other reasons as to why we should just go blow everything up why not hey preppers check out blackbeard fire starters go to www.blackbeardfire.com backslash doomsday and utilize code doomsday for 10 percent off your entire order at blackbeardfire.com i mean that's that's a very good point um let me go ahead and welcome in some more people here that came in welcome in raccoon six i saw you come in uh scooter welcome in dude mags natural man um rifle welcome in richie welcome in and my lovely wife has joined us as well hmm so anyway uh i've been trying to kind of rationalize in my in my head what would be the purpose of the balloon right we they're already doing surveillance through tiktok they're already doing surveillance with satellites how would a balloon benefit you because it's also above the cloud cover right um well i'd probably be so fascinated with the caliber of people that live in this country I'd probably want to see what their faces look like and their homes too. 
because you know some of these people are rocking some homes that are just hoarder homes for sure you know I, i've seen some of these people's crazy tiktoks that they put out about stuff that makes no sense and you watch them and you're just like huh and if i were china i'd be like yeah screw it let's go see what's wrong with these people they're already seeing it because they have the tiktok yeah i know but they get to like <laughs> see their homes and be like okay that explains a lot more See, Richie says EMP delivery system uh, and LIDAR. I don't know. Um, Al says to punk us out. You know, <laughs> so I, I watch a TikTok today. I get what you're saying with, with the people that are obsessed. I, watch, I watched a TikTok today that kind of melted my heart a little bit. It was this younger kid, and he is totally obsessed with vacuum cleaners. Um, nice. He has a collection of over like 100 vacuum cleaners. He loves to vacuum. His mom works at a hair salon. He goes down there once a day just for the sake of vacuuming. His father is uh, the fire chief at the local fire department. He goes there at, like every day to vacuum. And if there's nothing to vacuum inside, I guess he goes out and vacuums the parking lot. And now he started his own repair business repairing vacuum cleaners. That's awesome. And he he's, did, it, he's young. And yeah, he's getting it. And I'm like, well, dude, if, I mean, your life kind of sucks. Eh. Um, but, <laughs> but I mean, he's doing the damn thing and it was like, he was, he was just so happy. He's like, yeah, I got a vacuum like four times a day, man. It's great. Respect the hustle, man. I guess. Anyway. Um, so one thought I did have with this, with this balloon system though, is could this be a way to acquire data from devices that they can't get through cell phone networks? Or through like satellite internet, like is you know what I'm saying? Is there a different signal that they they can send out to bounce data back, right? From probably this back and forth between the balloons themselves, because I know they run on a certain mesh technology that they communicate amongst themselves. But the data that usually those type of balloons procure is based on a series of uh, metadata and. Uh, just topography tags and then they share that back and forth and and put a blueprint if i had to guess i would probably say you're charting out let's let's just go down this and just theorize if you will you know we have complete aerial shots of everything from twenty five thousand feet you can see everything um you can see air bases you can see everything and if you're going to chart these things what better way to do it you got you got almost seven whole days you got six days in a row of charting this out um, from where, where did it go from, from Canada? And they, it went all the way through basically the Midwest. They caught it in Montana and shot it down where? So, coast of South Carolina, outside of Myrtle beach. So it went all the way across the Midwest where basically all of our nuclear deterrents are at, where all of our AA main stations are at. So they probably got a crap load of data that's tagged back and they can compile that together and, and put a nice little topographical map of every every uh, asset that they'd want to attack, right? Want to be a guest on the show? Email it's doomsdaypodcast at gmail.com. That's it's doomsdaypodcast at gmail.com. I mean, I, I would say, yeah, that's absolutely possible. Um, sure. uh, you know, another thing, it, okay, something to consider. All right. I've told this story on the show before and I'm going to tell it again. So a buddy of mine, he's a pilot. He did a lot of contracted stuff with helicopters, right? His friend had a job working for Google. And their job was to fly around in a small helicopter and go and retrieve weather balloons. Okay. At one point, and I don't know if Google is still doing this or not, this was supposed to be hush-hush. Google was sending out a ton of weather balloons consistently all the time so they can get an exact measurement like of the curvature of the Earth, right? And their, their point of doing this was they were trying to create a global internet system, all right? Joke this was... Them, the Earth's flat. That's right. <laughs> curvature. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... So the um, the whole thing about it is is I mean I guess it never came to fruition because this is over ten years ago now, right? Yeah, so yeah. maybe they're still working on it. I don't know, but I mean Elon Musk is doing Starlink now, so it is what it is. But what if you needed specific data across the U.S. curvature, all this stuff, 
wind patterns, everything else, so you could accurately engineer ICBMs to hit targets in the U.S. Because you're not going to get that data from a satellite. You're not going to get that data from Google Maps. You're you're not going to get it, right? True. I mean, so to me, you have this low-lane balloon that's going through, doing scans of topography, all, all these things. And it's coming across the U.S. at kind of this like diagonal pattern starting up north on the West Coast and ending in the southern part of the United States down in in South Carolina. You have a good split over over the um, well, I guess they that did they come in past the Rocky Mountains? Did they come in that way? I guess it came in somewhere through Canada and flew south and then went toward Montana and then went to the East Coast. From my understanding, it kind of made like a almost like a Nike swoosh. Swoosh. They just did it, you know? They just. <laughs> yep, they did. <laughs> okay, so anyway, so you go, <laughs> you, you have this balloon, it's coming over, it's tracking the state, it's getting the topography of the United States along with the curvature. That data sent back could definitely help them engineer better ICBMs. That's my thought. Um, So ICBM, guys who don't know what that is, I'm sure most people do, intercontinental ballistic missiles, right? They've been working on technology, and and, and this was within the last year or two these stories were popping up, and I don't know if it's true or not. It's very loosely, it's very loose online whether it's confirmed or not, but they are apparently, China's now working on missiles that can go up, into the atmosphere, out in space, do a curve around the earth and then come back in and smack its target. Right. Um, so, which is wild. Like, well, how the care. hell does we one have, prepare for that? We have rockets that do a backflip and land on it, on its butt on the way back down. Right. But Let's we can't take out the balloon. <laughs> well, it's really hard. Okay. Have I you, know. Have you the seen me- our military lately? Have <laughs> Lester, have you seen, have you seen our military? I rem- I recall seeing an ad about about our military here recently, and I I wonder about the state of that, especially with our military budget as big as it is. What are we paying for? We we paying to dye everybody's hair now? Is that what we're doing? Um, it, it's a it's a wonder we can get anybody in a jet to go fly and shoot a balloon. That that's a good point. I mean, I I get it. <laughs> But, you have to go through all these steps and ask them how they're feeling emotionally and make sure that jives. And you have to use all these terms now. Like, is this a vibe for you? And they'll be like, nah, not feeling it, bruh. Okay, so pull your I'll, red card. I'll, I'll tell you what, though. I mean, in all seriousness, the memes for the balloon have been great. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys haven't seen these, I posted a couple on on the Twatter. Guys, they're great. They're hilarious. These are some of the best memes I've seen online in years. Um, they are fantastic. And I know some people in, in our, our group over on Clapper have been sharing it around. Oh, so guys, it, I know a lot of you guys are on the Clapper already. If you're not on the Clapper already, let me tell you guys something. They're doing a referral program right now to where you get a link if you're on the Clapper, and then you could refer people. And they're doing payouts up to 50 grand, um, which is insane. Yeah. Hey, preppers, check out Blackbeard Fire Starters. Go to www.blackbeardfire.com backslash doomsday and utilize code doomsday for 10% off your entire order at blackbeardfire.com. Yeah, dude. So how it's working is, <clears throat> excuse me, you get a referral code and people that join up, they sign up with your referral as they do their lives and they get their diamonds and they get their tips and they get their different things. You get a cut of that. And they're allowing people to get a cut of that up to 50 grand. Good Lord. Right. So it's, it's pretty wild. So if you've gotten one of those referral links, uh, definitely utilize it to bring in your friends and stuff like that. If you're listening to this live right now, though, and you don't, have the clapper i can give you the link for mine um and then you can get yours and we can do this pyramid scheme and all make money together how do we get some my referral code code name lester dooms (laughs) so uh ozarks they actually sent me mine uh in a message 
they sent me mine today. Uh, and if you go to my link tree, it is available. Um, I'm actually going to pull this up so I can give you guys uh, what this looks like. We're going to start calling you the clap daddy. Yeah, dude. Oh, he's fine with it, guys. Good deal. Clap daddy. Clap daddy. Clap daddy. I'm reading comments. Um, and I got something else cool to tell you guys about today. And then I want to run something by you guys. Seals and heels. <laughs> All right. So let's see here. Okay. So the Clapper referral thing for me is going to be very simple. Clapper.vip slash it's doomsday podcast. It's there. Um, that's the code. If anybody wants to join the Clapper, let me know. I could put this in the chats and you guys can copy and paste it. But I think most of you are already there. Um, I think most of you guys are already over there. And I mean, it. you know, if people are, if they're, I guess, doing, if you know people who do a lot of lives and they're like, yeah, I'm going to go there and I'm going to do lives, it's worth it. Because that's where the money's made. And if you have a friend that likes going live, that's probably the thing to do. Um, been on Clapper for two years. Gotcha. Well, see, I, I know most of you guys are. Um, the other thing is I wanted to run by you guys today. Uh, two more things. Just some updates here. Um, now I've got a new affiliate for the show, Reaper Apparel Co. Uh, we're now a brand ambassador and an affiliate of theirs. So if you guys want some cool gear, uh, go to Reaper Apparel Co dot com I believe it's dot com and utilize code doom 10 and you'll get 10 percent off your order there they got some they, there's not that much stuff they got some cool hats some cool hoodies things like that i mean it's it's cool um you know just another way to, to plug something in there for for the show uh and then one other thing and i wanted you guys opinion on this little joe thank you for the beer man greatly appreciate it um i'm really considering doing ad free episodes, doing ad free uploaded episodes, uh, in a patron program. Let me know if you guys think that that's a good idea. And this goes for you guys in the live room and also people that are listening online, email me at it's doomsday podcast. If you'd want, if you'd want, um, ad free episodes, if you, if you'd want those monthly, we can do a patron program. It's already up and running. All I got to do is activate it. Oh, soup. Yes. Soup. Little Joe. Oh, we can say whatever we want here. I haven't said soup in a while. Damn. Anyway, so those are my updates, Jake. You got any cool things going on? Oh, you don't have anything going on, man. <laughs> that was a lot of stuff. <laughs> it was a lot of stuff. I've been busy. <laughs> You're doing everything. I'm I'm writing some stories and selling some coffee, dude. My usual. You sell coffee? I sell coffee. Bearded what kind bean of coffee? coffee company? You ever heard of the Bearded Bean Coffee Company? No, tell me more. Let me tell you a little bit about it. The Bearded Bean Coffee Company is sourced with AAA rated gourmet blends sourced from 42 different countries around the world. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a longer audio clip there to keep playing while you were talking. I was rolling with it, man. It felt good. <laughs> it only lasted so long, though, and then other other things would have overtaken it. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, it stopped, and I was like, crap, I went too long already. Why don't, why don't I have uh, this computer? It's not the computer's fault. It's me. I'm computer illiterate. That's the problem here. And I'm not with it today. I am definitely getting sick. Like, I could feel it. If my wife's still in here listening, no, I'm coming home with a disease. I can and I'm sharing it. In your nose. I can hear it in the back of your throat. Yeah. it's Dude, it's there. You sound extra doomy today. I do. Are you feeling extra doomy? I wasn't when I woke up, um, but now I I am, and it's it's getting worse. And uh, it doesn't feel too good, man. Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. You know what could make me okay, though? I'm afraid to ask, but what? Hey, preppers, are you looking for good coffee? Go to www.beardedbeancoffeecompany.com. With over 42 different varieties of coffee, you'll find what you like. 
Why not use code DOOM15 at checkout for 15% off your coffee order? Again, that's DOOM15, D-O-O-M-15, for 15% off your order at beardedbeancoffeecompany.com. Grab life by the beans. I was totally going to have some coffee when I get home. That was beautiful. <laughs> I got to update it, though. There's more varieties now. Oh, and yeah. I want to know. Like I want to know. Different what, blends now. What's a flu bomb jelly? That's not. I don't. I don't know. We're talking about China. Who knows, man? I don't know either. I got to um, welcome in little red Jen. Welcome in uh, Carolyn. Welcome in guys. I I got to put an order in for more. I, I think the uh, I'm down to the pumpkin spice. I'm back to the pumpkin spice now. Trying to finish that up. Uh, everything else is gone. I had like all these different small bags from the variety pack and stuff like that. It's all gone now because my wife said, you're not getting more coffee till you drink all that shit that's in the cabinet. And I was like, all right, calm down. Yeah. I'll drink it. Pumpkin spice with your Uggs and oversized hat and big sweater. <laughs> drink it while sitting on a bale of hay in an obscure place. You know, it's, it's so weird. I, I, I got to tell you, it's really, really weird to have something pumpkin spice now this time of year i made it's, a cup of uh, it fits it's fine listen it was weird i i had a, a cup today and i'm like wow it this feels like fall but it's it's weird because like right now we are in like this weird weather pattern to where today was like in the 60s and sunny and i'm like oh spring's here now knowing that we get like our worst snows in february yeah, it so, was like 45 here, and I was like, wow, it's nice out. And then tomorrow, it's supposed to be even warmer. It's supposed to be like 50. Hey, preppers, do you want 10% off survival food? Go to www.readywise.com and use code DOOM10 at checkout for 10% off all your survival food needs. Again, that's code DOOM10 at checkout at readywise.com. D O O M 10 for 10% off at readywise.com. And it's going to go away. I know there's going to be a cold snap that's coming back. Um, so let's get into what's going on around the world. Uh, sweetheart, you might want to call your relatives to see uh, how they're doing over there. And our trip to Greece may be a little bit screwed up this year. So if you guys haven't seen, and uh, you guys were the ones that brought this to my attention. There was a wicked freaking earthquake that happened in Syria and Turkey. Yeah. Um, and I, latest reports that I read say over 5,000 dead. 7.8 magnitude in Turkey, the last I knew, took out 1,300 yeah. people, man. That's terrible. Yes. So, and the reason why well, she's like, oh, it's Syria and Turkey. Yeah, so she already knows. Whatever. Everybody knows everything all the time. God. Where's my admin? Somebody block her. Oh, wait. She is an admin. <laughs> anyway. So. Hey, she, five, she's good at reading ads, man. You don't want to you don't want to burn that bridge. That's true. She's she's proving to be useful. Um, no, but, you know, I mean, guys, you know, this is more. This is a higher body count than 9-11. Right. If you believe, you know, I don't know what people believe out there, but the body count's really high on this. This is a big, big deal. There's a lot of damage, a lot of destruction, and, I, you know, a lot of countries are coming together and providing aid to help help out Syria right now. Um, I am a little bit worried of what's going to happen with this, though. Um, I want you guys to understand something. This was the rebel-ran part of Syria, Okay. When these big earthquakes happen and the U.S. says, hey, we're going to pledge aid, it usually comes with displacement. And they move those people out of the area. And sometimes they immigrate them to the U.S. What? That's what happened with Haiti. And what? now, yeah, yeah, man, I've, Jake, I've seen it with my own two eyeballs. I don't know if it was so much a conspiracy because there was a guy on Twitter two days before this happened, two days ago, who said... Huge magnitude earthquake making its way toward Turkey could be any day now. And two days later, it went off. People I'm knew not, about it. Well, I'm not. No, no, I'm not saying the earthquake was a conspiracy. No, no, I was. I read a comment in there. I, uh, natural. Oh. The, I heard the. I heard the conspiracy thing that it was like harp or whatever. I was like, uh, nah. I kind of looked into it a little bit, and there was a guy um, who studies this stuff, and uh, he called it two days before it happened. So, the, you know, 
<laughs> Justin Bieber says, earthquake planned. How's Thanos? I don't know. I haven't spoke to him. He doesn't have any contact information. I I try to tell my wife, like, I need a place to add him so I can just randomly send him goofy American shit. Um, anyway, so, yes, absolutely correct about relocating displaced citizens. So that's that's the scary part, and that's why I referenced the Greece thing, because they're not too far away, and you might get a lot of people ending up there. Uh, maybe. Who knows? We'll see what happens. But they absolutely will try to relocate relocate people to the U.S. There's no doubt in my mind. And with that much destruction, that many people already dead, massive displacements coming with that. Send them to Italy so they can't complain on the Internet. <laughs> we won't get status updates to know how the, the uh, placement's going for them, though. That's the problem. Fantastic. That's what I want. Uh, anyway, yeah, I heard, I heard you hating on the internet last night, and I'm like, man, is, is he a self-hating Italian now? What the fuck's going on? No, man, I love my people. Everybody hates us. Dude, I, I don't even want to get into it. All I'm going to say is that we're some of the most hated people, and we get made fun of the most, and nobody cares. Nobody cares. Actually, I think it's pretty funny. I care. Um, I love it. I love the jokes. Three-headed to... Wait. Three headed to Northern Iron Iraq, hanging with the Kurds. What? Anybody? There. Could, there. Anybody there headed to Northern Iraq? Are you dyslexic? Uh, maybe, dude. I'm getting sick. Like, so my brain is just kind of out there today. Welcome, uh, Jonah. So, yeah, I, I mean, this this cold's coming on, and it's making me a bit loopy. Um, so in other news. Well, actually, before we get into other news, Natural Man told us last night he had some inside information about the balloon. Fed, so he, fed, fed. <laughs> so he might, he might want to call in. It's all over the news now. What did we miss? Call it in, man. Talk to us like you know us, like you've known us forever, and, and tell us how great of a job we're doing, but also tell us how terrible of a job we're doing. This yeah, a, that too. This was a Twitter space joke. Just aircraft and weapon used. Oh, you made it sound like you had such great inside information last night. And I'm like, what the hell? Little Joe, thank you for the gift. I think that's flowers. I hate getting sick, man. I'm going to be so screwed up tomorrow because it's it's hitting me now. He sent you a balloon. Is it balloons? Dude, I... Oh, fuck. <laughs> It's everybody a, listening on everybody listening is so disappointed i'm so out of it dude um it, he's keeping the, the theme balloons. of the podcast tonight I, he is uh in other news uh brought to my attention everything was brought to my attention today i i was like barely on saw any kind of news or stories i didn't get on epic times at all today um they're about to murder everybody in uh pennsylvania and ohio um by doing a chemical release from from the train the train derailment Right. Yeah. Everybody in a mile radius of that has to evacuate immediately. Now, guys, look, I, I want everybody <laughs> to understand something, and I want to be very, very clear on this. When they speculate what can happen to you with hazardous materials, always think that it's going to be worse than what it is just to safeguard yourself. Because you do realize they're not putting people through human trials and testing these things on them. Right. So a lot of these are things that have already went wrong or their assumptions, but they're not factoring in environmental conditions. If you have any past medical history, they're saying some people could suffer permanent lung damage from this or death. You know, if, if they're within a close enough proximity, there could, there could be people 50 miles away with COPD and they walk out the door and, and keel over. They don't know. So if you're in that area and you have had any like major health concerns, I would be getting the hell out of Dodge. Well, you know, there's going to be like there. There's going to be that old guy who just who just ain't moving for no reason. He's going to just be sitting there watching TV and watching the whole thing go down. I ain't getting out of my house. I don't care what they say. And then they're going to come arrest him. And then you know it's going to be a whole big thing. But you're going to have those people who just dig in and hang on for dear life, no matter what. I ain't afraid of no train. You know, it's, <laughs> it's going to happen. I ain't afraid of no train. I like it. <laughs> you're you're going to read a story about this old disgruntled guy who just wouldn't leave and 
police extract old man, 84 years old, said, I ain't leaving my, my house for this. And they had to arrest him. I ain't going nowhere. Exactly. <laughs> so, dude, so that happens That happens with 911 calls. I've been hearing all these paramedic stories about how it is so crucial to convince people to get on the ambulance because so many people just don't want to go. And a lot of the times, like they said, it's it's Jim who's been in this cabin I built this place 84 years ago and I'm not leaving. I've never left this place. And they got to like, and he's like, no, I'm not signing a refusal. You need to keep me here and save my life. What you am know, I supposed to do with my horse? Exactly. <laughs> he's got a horse and a lawnmower and he's not leaving guys. So funny story. They told us in the EMS thing was uh, they, they came, there was a car wreck. It's a, EMS gets called out a lot for car wrecks. I'm coming to find I'm learning. Um, anyway, so in the car was the person's pet raccoon. Okay. Um, I guess this couple got a car wreck. They had a pet raccoon in the car. They both got sent to the hospital. Well, the raccoon was fine and you can't take a raccoon to the hospital. My understanding. So they had to bring this thing back to EMS headquarters. Um, because I guess animal control was just unavailable. Mm-hmm. Right. He is not going to like this one. So. This raccoon, I guess, was just hanging out in EMS headquarters waiting for, like, a family member to come pick it up like it was a kid. Well, like his raccoon parents are going to come in a car and pick him up? Yeah. <laughs> what? Uncle Ricky's going to come get him. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Did they call know. in? They <laughs> were on the way. I I guess, yeah. They they escorted the car. Co- they, they took the couple, I guess, to the hospital. They brought the raccoon back to the headquarters and were basically like, hey, uh, you got a relative coming to get this thing, right? And they were like, yeah, yeah, they're on the way. They, I guess it stayed there. I don't know if they said for a day before someone came, got it, but it was just hanging out, <laughs> just living in the office. And it was like real friendly, like playing with everybody and stuff. It's, it was great. I don't understand. I don't know what's going on in this world anymore, man. What kind of mushrooms has Jester been consuming? Dude, <laughs> I'm just, I'm telling you the stories are telling me, man. That's it. Um, I didn't evacuate during a fire. I stayed and fought the fire, saved my house doing it. Nice little Joe. He's not consuming mushrooms. He's been taking alpha brain. It works. Oh, good. No, I haven't been, I haven't been taking anything. I uh, Actually, the only thing I did take today, I took my normal vitamins that I normally take, and I took some elderberry tincture because um, I, I felt this sickness coming. So I'm going to go home later and load myself up with a bunch of stuff, and hopefully it makes me – um. It makes me feel better. And if I'm not better by Thursday, hot toddies it is. And we're going to have a good time. You got the Rona, bro. This is an emergency action message. At approximately 1 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Nora is tracking 15 ICBM nuclear missiles inbound to the following cities. Orlando, Miami, Pittsburgh, Dover, Newark, Richland, Philadelphia, New York City, Baltimore, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Boston, Seattle, Detroit. This is an extremely deadly situation. Stay tuned, the next emergency message will be a presidential address.